Hi, it's Mike with Utastic. I'm still here at GoToConf 2015, and I'm standing here with Otila Segedi, who gave a talk about uh, Nashorn making the rhinoceros thunder. Uh, well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. What rhinoceroses were you herding, and what is Nashorn? Nashorn. Well, we are not even herding them. We we, we just built one. So uh, Nashorn is uh, Nashorn is uh, German for rhinoceros. So uh, it is a JavaScript runtime uh, on the JVM. Mm -hmm. There is a bit of a tradition of uh, naming the uh, JavaScript runtimes on the JVM after rhinos because there was an early O'Reilly book on uh, on uh, JavaScript that had a rhino on its mm -hmm. cover. So yeah, I think the, that actually started the, the big book. Yeah. So I think that that actually started this uh, this uh, naming situation. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it allows for some uh, quite uh, nice puns. So yeah, well, the talk was mostly about uh, I, I was explaining to people just uh, what I are the things that we do to make sure that uh, Nasson actually runs uh, decently fast on the JVM. There's always there used to be this stigma of JavaScript runtimes that they that it's a slow language, and th this was mostly mis uh, dispelled by V8. So Google's V8 has really uh, brought uh, the Fast, uh, fast JavaScript runtimes to the market, and we are also doing our best to uh, to not be left in dust compared to v, uh, compared to V8. Mm -hmm. And we are doing a pretty decent job uh, about it. Uh, a lot of things that I was actually talking about in, in, in my talk are things that we uh, implemented since the original release. So Nasun mm -hmm. uh, had its uh, first release in, in in original Java 8 uh, last March, okay. March 2014. And since then, we did a lot of improvements that you would you would normally find maybe in a C compiler. So we do a lot of uh, static type inferencing, and uh, and we do a lot of uh, uh, crazy things uh, like type specific compilation. We we can optimize and deoptimize code on the run. So it turns out that if you want to write a really efficient runtime for your language, mm -hmm. you almost need to write half of a half of a VM really. Right. So the hotspot VM on the JVM. It already does these things with Java code. It does interpretation, various optimizations, and when it gets it wrong, then it de-optimizes, re-optimizes, and so on. And it turns out that we, we, we wanted to avoid doing these and just rely on the JVM, but the problem is that the language semantics is such, the JavaScript language semantics is sufficiently different from Java that you cannot really just leave it all to the JVM, but we just ended up needing to build a lot of these these things on, on, on top of it. So it becomes a very sophisticated runtime that can run uh, JavaScript programs on the JVM ever better. Yeah. I'm not saying really well, but it's ever improving. Uh, it's actually really great because there is a lot of challenges every day when I go to work. Uh, there's, uh, the, the, there's always the next thing that can still be done to make it more efficient. Right. Uh, there is not a particularly great or sexy story behind Nasrum because, you know, it's just JavaScript right. on the JVM. So, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, everything else is really just an implementation detail of how do we want to make it so that it, uh, it, it, it just uh, gets uh, better and faster over time. It's uh, One interesting thing about Nashorn is that it was actually the first JavaScript runtime that uh, achieved 100% uh, uh, specification compliance. There is a s set of uh, specification tests out there uh, that is openly maintained that contains some 11,500 tests and actually Nasson was the first uh, JavaScript runtime back in I think October 2012 or so that we actually managed to 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 implement it so that it passed all of the mm -hmm. tests. Now, I'm not I'm not a Node developer, but I know that Node and V8 are extremely tightly coupled, but as far as like just JavaScript syntax you know, as, as somebody who's working on the compiler, is there anything where you're looking at like, oh, there's Node? You know, how can we get Node mm -hmm. as a as a framework running on on top of Rhinoceros? So is, is that even the right question? Because like I said, yes. I'm, I'm not a Node developer. I'm yeah, we do actually have a Node version running on uh, on uh, Nashorn. We have a team internally at uh, at the company who was uh, writing a version mm -hmm. of uh, of it. But uh, we are not allowed to call it Node. Oh, yeah, because so, of the copyright and trademarks and stuff. Like yes, that. that's right. So the the owners of the of the Node uh, term have uh, graciously asked us to not use the name. So it actually mm -hmm. runs under the name Avatar.js. Uh, oh, Oracle okay. actually had a, a server side technology named Avatar, mm -hmm. and then we just uh, and then the name got 
expanded and reused. So avatar.js okay. is, uh, we refer to it as uh, Node API compatible server oh, framework. Okay, so that so. kind of gets around the uh, that old trademark thing. It's right. like we're compatible with them. Yes. Not we are them. So so it's there. It's it's also um, available. It's downloadable. You can you can try it. Uh, there's one problem with it that uh, it started out as a as a great effort, but it started pre pretty much as a as a hobby effort by one of uh, one or two of the developers within the organization. Mm -hmm. It got adopted, but those guys have since moved on. So unfortunately, the project itself is pretty dormant. But uh, it was active until a few months ago. It was closely tracking the the node code base. So right. um, it's uh, I mean. Again, I cannot say that, uh, yeah, go and use it because right. it's uh, at the moment it might not be ma uh, actively maintained, but mm -hmm. that might change in the future. And by any means, it's still pretty recent. So, cool. But it also proves just the fact that, yeah, sure, I mean, you can have a uh, node on, uh, on, on, on NAS one. Mm -hmm. It does work. And, you know, looking at a lot of the, it seems like a lot of the JVM developers uh, cross communicate, whether they're working on uh, JRuby or Clojure. I mean, I've, has there been anything? That you've looked at from JRuby or the work that you know, Rich Hickey's doing with Clojure mm -hmm. that have been pulled into Rhinoceros to mm -hmm. to help with optimization? Has there been any cross pollination there? Well, not really much as such. Uh, we do. I, I do talk with uh, Charlie Nutter a mm -hmm. lot, so the JRuby guy, and uh, uh, I don't talk that much with Rich Hickey these days. But uh, we run into each other at conferences. But uh, there is this great conference called JDM language summit that uh, Sun Microsystems and uh, used to organize and now Oracle organizes every year. It's a really small conference, usually sometime in the summer at the Oracle's uh, Santa Clara campus, the, the ex-Sun uh, yeah. campus, where uh, language implementers on the JVM get together and uh, it's, uh, and well, exchange knowledge, yeah. uh, talk to each other, there's presentations, but it's a very small conference. It's uh, the, the number of attendees, I don't think it even reaches 100 people, so it's uh, yeah. Somewhat hard to hard to get in. It's uh, fairly highly priced if you if, if if you can go to the JVM Language Summit. Um, we do talk a lot there. Uh, Nashorn. We we did we did speak with JRuby folks uh, on a few occasions. I think JRuby right now is uh, is uh, less sophisticated in terms of code generator typing uh, optimizations and so on. They do have a new version, JRuby 9000, which mm -hmm. is. Uh, which is uh, retaught from the ground up. Right. It has a um, its own internal, uh, separate internal code representation. I think that it will it will it will be awesome. It's right. uh, very 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 close to to the release. Um, yeah. So we talk to each other. There's concepts uh, that uh, that uh, we talk about, but uh, you know, I wouldn't say that there was uh, a lot in. Uh, in actual optimization, closure, closure also uh, optimization. I, I don't think that like language level optimization is high on their list of priorities. Mm -hmm. They just compile to JVM and then and then let let, let, let it deal with the things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I just think it's fascinating. I mean, uh, so many uh, developers who are implementation developers, uh, you know, you and users of these languages, uh, kind of differentiate themselves. I do JavaScript. I do closure. I do this. But the people that are implementing these languages. Languages are talking to each other. Yeah, of and course. it's and if if the people who are creating languages are talking to each other, it's maybe something that we should think about as end user developers. Is that you know, hey, use JavaScript, use Clojure, use JRuby. It, you know, just we're all we're all in this together. It's great, and uh, especially if you uh, are using the dynamic languages and you're deploying on the JVM, you even have uh, a little bit of a like a common foundation, which mm -hmm. is the JVM itself. So all of these uh, people will uh, be using uh, Java libraries, and if you want to, you can even you can even stitch together a system where if you find. Maybe you are writing a majority of your system in, in, in Ruby and you're deploying JRuby, but if you find a particularly nice algorithm implemented in Python, there is nothing really that prevents you from also uh, taking the Jitons jar file yeah. and loading it in and writing a little bit of an integration. And then you can just uh, 
go from your Ruby code and you can pass some data into your Python algorithm, mm -hmm. let it crunch the things, uh, give it back to you. So yeah. it's, um, it's, I, I think that uh, uh, as time progresses, hopefully uh, kind of a polyglot programming is, is, is becoming ever more yeah. reality. Yeah. So. Just let the, let the virtual machine sort it out. Yeah, of course. That's what they are for. Yeah. Right, well, thank you very much for taking well, the time to speak with me. I appreciate well. it. It was my pleasure. Thank you.